I've always wanted to be an athlete that's just like, who gives a shit? Just go for it. Don't sit there and hope for the best. Walk into the circle like, I'm going to drill this thing. Matt Denny's here and he's ready. The 25 year old, he has to zip up, find a way to get those pectorals in that suit. And be that competitor that just is relentingly consistent and just be the person who wants it more. Matt Denny's had the competition of his life. He's in fifth spot. I am the competitor that I've always wanted to be. That will pay dividends in a few years once I get that backing behind me. He needs to throw 67. 07 to get up into the medals. It's a huge throw out. It goes. Oh my! I knew in my heart that I had more there. What a throw! Walked, you know, 10, 15 metres. I remember I thought about it. His lifetime best, 66 metres, 15. He knows it's close. Has he got himself onto the podium here? 67.025 centimetres. I just missed out on my dreams by that much. I think knowing that so many people that supported me in just getting fourth and like a lot of people knowing my story and where I came from and like kind of talking about that story about being from rural and supporting that pathway more because that's where a lot of you know sporting success does come from but it's not well supported in facilities and education and coaching i think that's huge in in that for me because i know that i'm doing my part you know i got fourth i had that much support but it's also like okay well just a quick reminder that you need to continue progressing you need to show them that the fairy tale can be real and i think that's kind of where it's at it's like it's that part of the story where Everyone's wondering, will the fairy tale play out? Will Matt, saying that he's always wanted to be an Olympic champion, will that play out? You know, going from rural to then going to fourth and then, you know, actually winning and having that progression, I think that's, that's what I want, but I know that's what a lot of other people want to see as well. So it's just kind of filling the time from now till then and getting some more experience and just building up the reps in my arm to get me into a position where I can throw 68, 69, even 70 more consistently. I have a lot more support. I have, you know, I've always had a really good, you know, tight community support. We both were like, okay, well, we were by far the better competitor when it came to consistency. I just didn't have that horsepower behind me to get the bigger throws. And we did really well in the competition and you know, the technical model was quite good. The general thing was that it was really positive. The biggest thing that we got from it was just like the simplicity of training. Like we've actually had to do way less to get a, more results. And that's kind of shown a lot in the progress after we got back from Tokyo. The new way that we started the training was that we kind of reduced my gym session. So it's just kind of two big gym sessions and then other little small accessory activation sessions, which is totally different where I used to do four big gym sessions. We've kind of halved, um, but we've put a lot more intensity into those, but I've got more recovery time. It's been really nice because I've kind of had more time away from you know training in general, but I'm feeling fresher rocking up sessions. <laughs> I'm getting better speeds in throws, lifting, and like wattage outputs, which is like a huge indicator for our progression. And, you know, after I think maybe two or three months of doing that, I was under load and getting better results than what I was when I was peaking for Olympics. And we've just kind of continuously done that ever since. And it's been just day in, day out. weeks PBing consistently kind of in just everything but I was just always doing a PB at least once in every session continuously. Ben and I decided to open up at Sydney Track Classic this year. We could have done Adelaide Track Classic but with how COVID was kind of tracking and intensity everywhere I was just like well 
there's no point in competing now with the way training was where it was at. Sydney went pretty well. Like we threw 64-84, which is I think my best season open ever. But for where the training is comparative to last year and the year before, it's still way higher, but still getting better results, which has been really nice to see. The whole training process has been going really well as consistently PBing, but, and we were, you know, leading into Sydney track looking really good after Sydney. I think it was the week after Sydney. I had a gym session where I was doing eccentric bench press. So I had about 160 and I was doing five second eccentric lower. And then on this machine, it basically catches and then lifts it back up. And, you know, while I said it was fine, did um, first set and it was fine and then basically did the eccentric load, took it at the bottom, it decided to malfunction for some reason and then dropped 160 just clean, choked me for five seconds and then luckily people were able to lift it off and get it off because I'd had no control, I couldn't get it off me and luckily other people were there otherwise it would have been a totally different story. I, I laid there for I think it was like two minutes, honestly just couldn't believe what had happened. And then I had the day off the day after and then um, and then the day after that, I went back for a gym session. Everything felt not too bad. I was a bit fatigued, but it wasn't too bad. Um, and then I was doing back squats and my mid back went into extension. Those kind of put a little bit of a uh, kick in the, the rhythm of training, but we're still progressing. hard to even just get normal throwing sessions and like everything was adapted and couldn't really get time with the discus. My initial like goals for nationals was to be around that 65, 66 mark with the load and everything that happened. I think I would have been quite happy with that. Qual was an interesting one because I did that first round foul. Uh, it was kind of, I, I was like, don't do a three foul. Kind of kicked my nerves up, which was nice. Just like a bit of a reminder. And, Yep, you are still human to, you know, stuff things up and maybe fail at this. And yeah, got my second round in, 61. Huge tailwind, which is bad for discus. And yeah, it was not much we could really ask for, but just to kind of deal with it and get on with it. Compared to last year, I've actually had a full total prep other than the hiccups with the back and the bench accident. I, yeah, like I'm just, I'm so much further in front. It's just more about when we peak is controlling that and competing like we did in Tokyo, which I don't think we really should. Yeah, final was kind of the same thing. Like I had that first round foul again, like a 59. With the conditions and the massive tower win that we had, six, nearly 63 is pretty solid. Um, but it's just frustrating when you don't get a chance to compete at your best when you see the 100 metre sprint, you know, races getting swapped to have tower wins, uh, which is like aids their performance where we're having a tower win, which disadvantages us. People want to see you throw over the automatic qualifying line. No one really cares if you throw 62 and a half. Whereas if you put it down the other end where we might have actually had a little bit of an assistance, I probably would have got qual. So yeah, it's a bit frustrating. For me to be an ultimate competitor kind of thing, I have to actually have people that are competitive against me. I think this is definitely way different because I'm in a better position and know that if I can throw 67 in the stadium off of that prep, then this year's, you know, a bit of a given. Biggest thing for me this year is just consistently competing and, and putting a bit more weight to my argument of being the best thrower. But yeah, the main thing is to win Worlds and then back up and win Commies, because if I can do a double, like that'd be huge. To actually have all that support and build that base and, you know, those performances, now it's like, well, you're in a position where 
you can compete consistently and be competitive and do well. It's just doing it for them and for yourself. You know, where you come from, what you do, who you are as a person, how you competed. I think the story of being from a rural community and that whole grit, getting from where I was to where I am now and you can be disadvantaged or you, like you can be in a position where you know things aren't favorable to you getting there but you kind of just have to find the way and the process to get to that because yeah that's all being an athlete is really about it it's just more of a challenge like how good can i be